it was a dream tonight for Democrats, which was that early on, they'd be able to say, okay, we, we, you know, we won a couple in Virginia, we won in Kentucky, and this is going to show that this wave is starting and you, and you can't stop it. Now, they can still win the House. I think it's probably more likely they will win the House than not. But, um, but they can't have, it, it, there's no tsunami. There's, there's no tsunami coming. This is CNN, home of fake news. Um, well, first of all, there are still people standing in line in Georgia. There are still people standing in line in Florida. People, this is not over. People need to, to stay out there and continue the fight. Uh, this is heartbreaking, though. Uh, it's heartbreaking. Uh, the hope has been that the antibodies would kick in, that this sort of infestation of, of hatred and division uh, would, re- would, would draw a response from the American people, really in both parties, to say no and no, no more. Uh, that does not seem to be happening tonight. It's not a blue wave, but it's still a blue war. We've got to continue the, the fight forward. Now, respectfully, is this really what we're talking about today after we had historic gains in the Senate and some of yes, the Yes, because there and... will now be oversight that well, hasn't existed for the past two years. Right, but so there will just be more happened. oversight. And as you know, Democrats have long wanted there to be more oversight of this White House. Well, I'm sure. Um, some of them, it seems to be all they talk about. But what do their voters think? What do their constituents think? Uh, well, let me just say, the last, the, time, the last time the Democrats did, um, let's just say, an extra investigation, it was during the Kavanaugh hearings, and the four Democratic senators who voted against Brett Kavanaugh all lost last night. Kavanaugh does seem to have certainly and, and gone won, uh, in the direction of no, Republicans. Well, for sure. But I'm just it, showed, it showed how ham-handed they were about an investigation. Overreach sure is always... For sure. Our power didn't, Over- mention, didn't matter last night. The places where President Obama went, the people yeah. he campaigned for, yeah, yeah. law. I hear you. Um, Overreach certainly is a problem. <laughs> Unpredictability, Anderson. That's one thing we saw in 2016. That's something we're seeing in 2018. We still have a ways to go, but we're now at 70%. Now it's 70 percent in the state of Texas, and the Democrat, Beto O'Rourke, is leading the Senate race. It has been called for Ted Cruz, and the New York Times is calling him. I mean, it's close. I, look, we, we're, let's have that conversation that you know seems pointless. But he, he won by three points. Incredibly close in comparison to past uh, Senate races in Texas. You know, Beto O'Rourke's probably got a very bright future. The, the vote still, there's a ton, two-thirds of it to come in. But as of right now, it's projected that Ted Cruz will end up winning. Which is devastating. Congressman Jerry Nadler will likely be the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Just today, Nadler was on a train back to Washington from New York, and he was overheard by somebody laying out his legislative priorities. First on the list, not making this up, impeaching Brett Kavanaugh and removing him from the Supreme Court. Apparently, that's what Democrats really believe voters want. More than anything else, get that Kavanaugh guy off the court. Congressman Adam Schiff of California, meanwhile, is poised to take over the House Intelligence Committee. He's been the ranking member there for the last couple of years. He says that come January, when he takes over, his main priority will be intensifying the Russia probe, because it's not intense enough or longstanding enough. Schiff apparently thinks that he can prove that Vladimir Putin somehow stole the 2016 election with a few dozen Facebook ads that hardly anybody saw. Well, the Jim Acosta one is strange because Jim Acosta like, he wasn't supposed to be talking then, right? Right. He was interrupting. He was deciding that he was more important than the other person who was talking. Right. I hate to see this become a news story. Acosta is such a buffoon, but he's such a buffoon that the White House apparently felt it had no choice but to respond. The press secretary, Sander, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, put out this statement, quote, President Trump believes in a free press and expects and welcomes tough questions of him and his administration. We will, however, never tolerate a reporter placing his hands on a young woman just trying to do her job as a White House intern, as apparently that woman was. This conduct is absolutely unacceptable. It is also completely disrespectful to the reporter's colleagues not to allow them an opportunity to ask a question. The statement went on to say, as a result of what happened today, the White House is suspending the hard pass of the reporter involved until further notice. So that's today's Jim Acosta sidebar. And he was also deciding that he was more important than everyone else in the room. And he's also deciding that having a White House press credential is a human right. So basically, you you could do whatever you want, it'll never be taken away. But there's got to be some decorum, right? Well, their argument, I would guess, I can't speak for Jim Acosta because I can speak in a normal voice, but their argument Ah! would be that because the president has made things so lack of decorum, which Mm -hmm. he has, I mean, 
therefore they're following suit. Well, I was, you know, I was just trying to ask a, a question of the president at this press conference, and it was obviously a question they didn't like. It was about his uh, racist ad on, on the caravan that they were running before the midterms. Uh, he and I were going back and forth there, and as you can see in this video, uh, this intern came up to me. I, they're, they're describing her as an intern. I don't really know who she is and attempted to take the microphone away from me, uh, all I can say at that point is that I was trying to hang on to the microphone so I could continue to ask the president questions. You know, it's unfortunate. I mean, look, I think I, I appreciate the fact that he goes out of his way to question the White House narrative and he goes out of sure. his way. That's to, his job, yeah. Yeah, to, to put the irons to the president and get him to answer questions. But you can't do that while someone else is talking. The right. other guy had the microphone. The other guy was supposed to be talking, right? He, well, he, this is why I think he's unforgivable. Because during the Singapore summit, when you had President Trump and Kim Jong-un from North Korea, and they're making signing a piece of paper, and they're trying to kind of hopefully go towards a peaceful direction, Acosta gets up and yells, Hey, uh, what about Otto Wambier? Mr. Kim, will you give up your nuclear weapons, sir? You got this guy who's got 25 million hostages. He's hold, uh, taking the first step to dropping his gun. You're like, hey, what about that kid you killed? What about, you know, that's yeah. there's a time and a place. Yeah. And I don't think Kim Jong-un speaks English. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. So uh, I think the guy took wrestling a little too seriously. Uh, and, and is that like, what it is? I don't know what it is. I mean, you know a lot of reporters. I know a lot of reporters. They don't act like this. No. I think he likes attention. And I think he feels like... Some, there's something very significant about what he's doing, and he. I think he also wants to be a martyr. Oh. He wa wants to be, a, uh, you know, like every, like you know, he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. And but for him, uh, we'd be facing Nazi Germany. I, mean, I yes. never thought in this country that I, I wouldn't be able to go and cover the president of the United States uh, simply because I was trying to ask a question. CNN could just get someone else, right? Who's not going to scream out? Right. It's not like they're trying to block CNN. And, it's like they're saying to this exactly. guy, like you, you, you're interrupting. Like, you're yelling things out. And then, what if everyone yelled things out at the same time? Are you better than everyone else? Because you're not. You're just a person here. And if you just decide, my opinion and my voice is more significant than anyone else's. Well, you, you've thrown everybody else under the bus, the entire rest of the room, and the whole process. Well, I remember Leslie Stahl had Trump on 60 Minutes not that long ago, and, you know, they're going back and forth, and she goes, well, you know, well, I don't want to talk about that. I'm like, this is the fucking president. You're yeah. a reporter. If he wants to talk about it, at the very least, it's going to be the president says X, Y, and Z, so who are you to be like, Nana, shut up, we're not going to talk about this. And yeah. he's like, well, fuck you, I'm the president. Yeah. That you may have I'm not concerned about anything with you the may have Russian investigation because it's a hoax. Are you, That's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? Mr. President. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN.